Welcome to an edition of Globetrotting with Gillespie. Me, Dana Gillespie, on the sofa here at the TAM, the Temple of Art and Music. And as usual, we've got interesting guests to present to you. Well, in this case, one man who's sitting on the sofa. Would you please welcome Mr. Ian Siegel? Hello. Hi there, Ian. Just landed in from where? Well, came from Florida in, uh, and been doing a few gigs around the UK. Right, I'd better explain first, though... Um, uh, how I know you. Well, the blues scene is kind of small, let's face it, so I've always heard of your name. And then about 20 years ago, I said, did you come, want to come to Mustique? Mm -hmm. So we've had many years at the Mustique Blues Festival, many. having a lot of fun. Many. And, and all the musicians who come to the Mustique Blues Festival, they're all put in different houses. But I was heady and staying in the house. We, we stayed in the fun house, actually, and um, mm -hmm. it was, you know... It was pure rock and roll and blues. Absolutely. But I want to know things like, which I never bothered to ask you because I've known you for so long, but I think people watching this might be interested to know, how did you start, where did you start, and why did you start doing your blues? Mm. Loaded question. That's a good question. Um, I was, it's very simple, I was knocking around at 16 years old with my cousin's band over a duo, and cousin being the keyboard player and he had a drummer called Dave Houghton who'd, who'd recently quit the Joe Jackson band. Oh yeah, I remember and them. Dave encouraged me to sing. Um, I don't know why, to this day, we, neither of us know why because I, I never expressed that much of an interest. I was just really into the music. Anyway, one night at a gig, they he just said, why don't you get up and do one? So I got up and I did... And what did you do? Midnight Hour and Ain't Too Proud to Beg. <laughs> um, and that was that. And then, it, yeah, that's that's how it all started. But I was already into the blues I, I'd all, I, from a very young age. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I could say who is your favourites, but I can see on your tattoos you've got. I've got, I've got muddy, muddy up muddy there. Muddy on one side. I've got, and wolf, I've got wolf on that side. Did you ever see either of these two live? Nope. I've had the great honour of playing with many surviving members of Muddy's band. I saw you playing with Mud Morganfield. And Mud Morganfield and Big Bill Morganfield yeah. and Hubert Sumlin. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've, I've been very, very privileged to play with people connected with these two. But, yeah. I saw him playing live. I never got to play anything yeah. with him and we both missed Howling Wolf, which is mm. for me awful. I mean, yeah. I was at a concert. I must have been about 14, but I had to leave because I had to get to school the next day and he was top of the bill. So I missed him, mm. which was dreadful. So, I mean, I know you're about to go off to the States to do yet another album. Mm. You're like me. You're an old war horse. <laughs> no, workhorse is the expression. A war horse. No, war horse. No, you once said to me, you can work that boy because you're a workhorse. Do you remember <laughs> saying that years ago I, I, I you, might have, you might have been off your rocker well maybe <laughs> but you made loads of albums haven't you how many do you know how many i think it's 13 now yeah lucky i mean i don't feel that prolific to be to be honest but um you know i guess it's been quite a few yeah it's been a while though i haven't made anything since 2017 do you think. have a favorite out of the well, they all like all your babies it's babies yeah I never yeah. listen to them either. I don't know about you. No, I don't listen once they're finished, no. unless I have to learn a song. Well, yeah, that, yeah. And then, but you know, one can't sit back and put your feet up and listen to your own music. It would be weird. I'm, I'm sure we both know people that do exactly that. But um, <laughs> I won't say one. <laughs> there's one, one person we one know who definitely springs would. to mind immediately. Yeah. <laughs> but he will remain silent on that. We don't want to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> so you normally play with a band, but I know you do solo as well. I do mostly solo these days. I mean, for the last couple of years, I've been mostly solo, yeah. I'm, find, I'm finding touring a band, especially in the UK, is getting more and more difficult. And this is pre-you-know-what. Pre, um, because, um, because people don't want to pay for a band or the expense of getting... The, the your guys are from Holland, aren't yeah, they? Have the, they got a name? Um, collectively, they they were known as the Rhythm Chiefs, but um, yeah, that's just the Seagull Band because I've got no imagination, and I'm an egomaniac. <laughs> no, and also your guitarist has got a great name, Dusty Cigar, real you, name. You couldn't make a name up like you that, could, could you? Not. It's fabulous. Uh, and he is, 
uh, in my he's the opinion, dogs. Yeah, he's, he's one of the greatest guitar players on the planet. I mean, he re- he really is astonishing. Um, so you're back over later on in the year with him, aren't you? With them, we're doing the Red Rooster Festival in Norfolk, which is wonderful. In August, I may but even come and visit because I didn't want to risk. You know, all, all the testing and the, the possibility of cancellations, flying my whole band in from the Netherlands, I'm using some British guys who you might know, Evan Jenkins, Yay! Johnny Henderson, Yay! and Carl Stanbridge. All right. Yeah, so, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Dusty because I can't do without Dusty. Yeah. It means I have to play guitar, which is not, I'm not really a big uh, soloist. So, uh, well, I beg to differ. Sometimes yeah. I've seen you rocking out fabulously in Mustique. I have my moments, but uh, <laughs> Dusty's another level altogether. So. How old is Dusty? I think he's 29 now. Yeah, they're all... Because the they used to be all teenagers, or they used to be just 20 or something when you started Oh, God, no. I mean, I've known them since they were in their early teens, before they were my band, yeah, when they were about 14, 15, maybe. And they were astonishing. And they've been professional since they were 11. All in Amsterdam? Uh, more door direct Rotterdam area, yeah. But you're Amsterdam I'm now. I'm currently Amsterdam. And planning to leave? Planning to leave soon for Curacao, yes. Yeah, so you're back. That I know Red Rooster's something like the 28th of August, I think. 29th, I think we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Nick Lowe's on as well, we're on a massive fan of Nick Lowe. Me too, I love the sound of breaking glass. Right. <laughs> yes, he's amazing. Yes, he is amazing. Oh, what a great lineup. Mm-hmm. It's just down the road from Kimberley, where, oh, my, where my cousins, the Buxtons, all live. So if I'm there, I might nip over. Do that. And, um, it's a great festival. Yeah. So you've got a new album, you're writing it. It's in, yeah, in the writing process, which means I'll probably be cramming in the, in the week before I record. To record solo or with some other guys? When well, you, I bet you're going to take somebody on board by the time you get to America. Coincidentally, a favourite drummer of mine, uh, Mark Barrett, ex of the hoax, is going to be out there working on another project with the same people I'm working with. Um, so I'm almost certainly going to ask Mark to put some drums on. So uh, It's kind of a solo album, but I might you know, put a little... Little little brushes, well, yeah, you know, some uh, kind of a groove. I know, I know. It's kind of, it's been kind of a hip for for a while. What with sort of the Black Keys, C60, with people like that, doing no bass, just guitar and drums. Yeah. But I might dip a toe in in that water just because it, you know we'll see what happens. Yeah. But I, it's essentially a solo album I'm planning, but I'm going to probably invite other people to play on it if you know what I mean. Well, I've seen you perform so many times at the Mustard Blues Festival, which was 15 days in a row yep. every year, which was great, and, you know, everyone just having fun, actually. Um, so I really know what you do well, but I was hoping you'd uh, play a little something f- for, the, for the viewers. Can you face to do that? It's of not course. too early in the day for no, you. No, 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 no. Um, have you got a gig tonight? I have, oh, yes. Yeah, OK, well... Don't you don't have to go for it. Take life nice and mellow. And um, do you know yet what you're going to do? Uh, I've got something in mind. Yes. Give us a brace, two of them. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Anything else you want to tell the listeners about? If you feel you've got some wisdom to impart, oh, or goodness. some <laughs> um, a funny story, uh, a, a scandal. Well, no, no, not going to go there. Well, that's put me on the spot, hasn't it? OK, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, but you might have been wanting to say, you know, somebody like I'd really like to work with, mm, or... Mm. No. Mm. No, can't think of anything. All right, well, then, then I'll tell you to get your ass off the sofa and get up onto the stage. Okay, I'm, gonna, going I'm actually going to lie back and put my feet up, because yeah. I love how you play guitar. Thank you. And I love how you sing. Thank you. And, you know, you were one of the... Jo- I've mixed... With Dominic, the guy I mix all the things with in Wolf Studios, I mix so many numbers with your voice mm. that I know your voice really well. But I haven't mm. seen you now for what a year and a half. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, at least. not yeah. since maybe Italy last time. Yeah, that's right. Probably uh, the I, uh, dem- demise of Jurg around then would, would be yes. Yes, it would be. So can I whip that boy and say, yeah. get up there and entertain? Whip that boy. <laughs> And I'm just going to get comfortable. Sim 
seemed like the whole world's in trouble <clears throat> Maybe it's just part of the plan <clears throat> Looks like the shit's finally happened And it's sure hitting the fan Something going on And I know it's giving me chills Well, when the shit hits I'm heading for the hill <laughs> Should've seen it coming <laughs> Should've read the signs <laughs> People saying you look out for yours And I'm gonna look out for mine Something going down Like the man said, what it is ain't exactly clear Well, when the shit hits <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna get on out of here your neighbors make you mistrust your friends make you mistrust your own families where's this shit gonna end they divide us so they can conquer we got nowhere left to hide find yourself in isolation nobody on your side something going wrong Can't you hear the tall and sound? Well, when the shit hits, mm -hmm, when the shit hits, well, when the shit hits, I'm heading deeper underground. Thank you. <laughs> What's it called? The shit hit. <laughs> Parental uh, advisory or whatever it is. You want to hear another one? Yeah, okay. yeah, please. What's uh, it called? I am the train. From the rivers to the mountains, coast to shining coast, a silver line of mercury whining like a ghost. You can hear me in the grasslands, feel me in the trees, moving through the valleys like a wayward summer breeze. You can sense me in the atmosphere, across the dusty plain. Yeah, I'm not the stations, I'm not the stops, I am the train. Well now bring me priests and politicians, secular and saved They're in it for the long haul from the cradle to the grave You can ask them where you're going, they're gonna tell you where they've been They're all pugilists and pirates underneath the skin They don't make a world of difference, sacred or profane Yeah, I'm not the tickets or the tracks, I'm the train Yeah, now there's a little yellow idol, green and red ones too, burning off the roadside from here to Kalamazoo, while a hundred million effigies burn across the land, like many heartfelt messages delivered by my hand. I've seen triumphs and tragedies through the sun and the rain. I'm not the platform, all the passengers, I'm the train. And I hear me whistle, hear me whine I'm moving down the line to you 
come on now, hear me rumble, hear me grind. See my light come shining through. I got stones in my pathway. Can't you feel my pain? Yeah, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm the goddamn. There through war and pestilence, there through hours of need, driven by your opulence, driven by your greed. You were master, you were slaver. I see the blood upon your hands. I was built by stolen labor that you took from foreign lands. I shone a beacon in the darkness, cast a light upon your sin. You squeezed out all the juice, and now you're doing it again. It's gonna drive you to distraction. It's gonna drive you clean insane. Yeah, I'm not the Stations, all the stops, I am the train. Well, I'm not the sidings, I'm not the blinds, I am the train. The mean old fireman, the cruel old engineer. Almost hit that low note. <laughs> Yay! I am the train. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. My Thank pleasure. Thank you. Isn't that great, ladies ah. and gentlemen? Ian Siegel from me, Dana, on the sofa at the Tam. Goodbye till next time for another edition of Globe Trotting with Gillespie. It's the way you're stinging me.